fellow viewers, welcome to another interlude of our view. I am Chodong Gumba, your humble host. Today's happening will be one, if not our most pertinent investigation. This platform has in an earlier production mightily denounced the phenomenon of kidnappings for ransom. At the time, little did we know that some who had made numerous appearances on social media and elsewhere making bold statements against this phenomenon were the ones actually condoning such abominable acts on the ground. Here are a few instances of Ebenezer Akwanga denouncing kidnappings. How, how on earth, Ngomba, do you think that if actually Sokadev is holding these people, you will tell me to shut up and then I will release them? Sokadev is not holding them. But how do you think they will be released? If I am holding those people, which I don't do that, and then you come and insult me, I will terminate them. That is what I will do. But I don't get involved into such things because I never, ever encourage my troops to go picking people for ransom. Their job is to defend the homeland. So you don't come in and tell me how will I do that in my, in my, in my what? In a policy from your room. What has that got to do? Do you want to have a discussion with me? If you want to have a discussion, call me online. I will have it even on your TV. A civil discussion. It is not all this empty rhetoric you guys throw around. You call X and Y and talk. I will discuss with you on policy. Anytime, any day, I don't need to prepare. So you don't go around insulting me or telling me to shut up. When you have people's life, if you were a, a, a hostage negotiator, you have just sentenced them to death. It is an act of cowardice from you. Only cowards act that way. That is why I called you. And you didn't pick. And I decided to leave you these messages. It's a shame. It's disgraceful for you to go down that road. So you have to be very, very careful. I have intervened in issues that disagree with ADF that are not ADF. Because it has been my policy that we cannot go around kidnapping people, asking them ransom, or even forcing our people to give us money. Anyone who wants to be involved in supporting the struggle for self-defense should do so at their own whim and caprices. Nobody should be forced. That is the way I operate. And my friend, be very, very careful. This thing I'm telling you is what I will tell you in Texas. I don't give a damn. You can frighten other people. You don't do that to me. Not to me. Mbongo Moluta. You try that, you will regret. I will not talk further on this. If you try that, Ngomba, you are going to regret. So you have to be very, very careful. I want to be civil with you. You will be civil with me. Or you will pay the consequences of it. I'm saying this because I'm not afraid of a fight. Neither am I afraid of war. I have only one life. I'm prepared to die at any time. So you have to be very, very careful. There is nothing that has to do with whether I'm in my room or not. I many explain to you that we follow the Geneva Convention. It has nothing for you to write what you wrote to me. So you have to be very careful, young man. Maybe some people have given you the room. You think that you have some powers or you have some stuffs. Be very careful. I repeat, be very, very careful. You are treading on very dangerous grounds. Very, very dangerous grounds. Don't pick a fight. You'll never be able to withstand. And this is for the forces on the ground. There are some of you, our own forces, who have begun indulging in acts that I can call crimes, war crimes. I'm saying this in the open. There are some of you on ground zero. I know you. I know your names. I know where you are commanding. I know each one of you. Some of you are within the Muyuka Ekona estuary. You have not only sent letters to our people around my 16 and Bomaka, aided by a son of my 16. My own senior brother has not been living in his house now for close to a month. My own direct brother has to pay ransom to some of you people. You have become a nightmare to the struggle. And by so doing, you help people like 
You help people like um, Satan incarnate Atanganji to create their own self-defense groups and claim their amber boys because of the atrocities some of you people are committing. Let me assure you people of one thing. You will all go to the Hague. Not me, Akwanga. I will not take responsibility for your madness. Whether you belong to which of the self-defense groups, you will pay the price for it. I am taking stock because at the right time, you will each answer for the crimes you are committing. For attacking your own people, for molesting your own people. This particular investigation was prompted by concerned and affected individuals who have reached out to us, soliciting our forum to address their dilemma. Unfortunately, we have neither the logistics or manpower right now to address or solve all problems at once. However, no file on our desk will go unaddressed. We just have to be meticulous in doing our homework, so we give our audience nothing but the facts. The one message that kick-started this investigation was the case of a couple kidnapped in the vicinity of Bomaka around Boya. Family members reached out, pleading with us to voice the pain and suffering of this couple and possibly seek their release. Following up on our promise to be the voice of the voiceless, we did the necessary networking and reached out to the prime suspects. Some outrightly denied any involvement and promised to investigate and furnish us with any findings. Meanwhile, the guilt of some started to show based on their statements and threats. Here lies the evidence of my communication with Ebenezer Akwanga. Less than 30 minutes after our initial communication, Akwanga and surrogates had already embarked on sabotage using one of their numerous numbers to circulate in the WhatsApp forums. The drama did not end there. An Akwanga surrogate from Dubai reached out, making threats to my person. Our investigation unmasked the brainwashed fellow in a few minutes. Here is Lisanja John, alias Jangodin, from Bokoso village near Bomboko behind Mount Fako. Our findings showed that his father is of blessed memory. He also lost his brother, Jaffa, who was a soldier in the Cameroonian army. He lost another sister a few months ago. He has a sister, Njima, and a brother, Felix, who runs a small provision business in Bokoso village. Some of our sources during our investigation were so angered by his behavior that they offered to pay this guy a visit and teach him a bitter lesson. We suggested otherwise. We'll make him the sacrificial lamb and face of all the young men and women who have been radicalized by so-called leaders, keyboard soldiers and warlords. To all who continue to do the dirty work for their cowardly leadership, Know that you cannot hide, and when things fall apart, your commander-in-chief will simply move on and find a replacement for you. So, the evidence was starting to point towards certain groups, but we had to proceed with caution for the safety of the captured persons. Eventually, a ransom of 7 million secured the release of the couple. Frustrated by our inability to help secure their release, we pondered on how to proceed with actually unmasking the true faces behind these sad 
occurrence. A little bit more investigation showed that the perpetrators of the kidnapping were affiliated with Sokadev. Even after all the statements made by the Sokadev commander-in-chief, Ebenezer Akwanga. We, however, needed more solid evidence. Initially, we never considered Sokadev of Ebenezer Akwanga to be involved in such shameful activities. Since their commander-in-chief is always quick to make statements about the Geneva Convention. It was becoming clear that their hands were covered in blood and their pockets full of ransom money. Our breakthrough came with the kidnappings of Reverend Father Jude Thaddeus Lange, Reverend Placid Muntong Gui, Abel Fondem Ndia, and their driver, Jerry Bersin, on November 23, 2018. What really drew our attention was the fact that this group, in line with our philosophy of helping the needy, was actually going to deliver badly needed help to the needy. This group was headed to Munyenge and surrounding areas to deliver food supplies to those affected by the war. This was their fourth trip to the area. Unfortunately, this convoy was confronted by some malicious individuals who clearly did not care for those in need, but instead cared for their financial windfall of the greedy. Father Yene Anslet, who was later dispatched to negotiate with the kidnappers, was himself kidnapped. The strategy that kidnappers use is well calculated but simple. They start accusing others of committing the crime. Here is Akwanga, without second guessing, shifting the blame to So Foncha. If they are caught, they quickly disown any of their fighters involved. To throw people off their tracks, they are the first ones to claim to begin investigations. They also send out messages condemning the act and asking for information and help. Eventually, two things happen if and when the kidnapped are released. The fake good guys would have collected their cash and also get credit for assisting in the release of those in custody. Here is a Sokadev big gun claiming to be concerned about the fate of the kidnapped Reverend Fathers. Uh, greetings, uh, dear comrades. I'm Divine from Sokadev. It's with sadness I'm writing you or communicating with you. It's due to the, I can call it kidnap arrest of this Reverend Father Jude Tadios Lange. I don't know if you have any idea about his arrest because from what I got is around Munyenge. I think this is or uh, this has become a route to the entire struggle when we start arresting men of God who are times in support of the struggle who even support us so many times although they cannot come out in public to boast that they are supporting but when we start going around arresting this man of God, asking them ransom to an extent of detaining them in our camps is very, very absurd. 
I write you and I'm talking to you, trying to verify if you have any idea on this issue. That was one of the divines from Sukadev because they have many of them. After claiming to not know anything about the missionaries kidnapped, here is another Sukadev fighter with a completely different version. So, um, if I could understand you well, it means that a frame story behind that driver. That's the understanding I'm getting from what you are saying, sir. But notwithstanding, can you please talk with Dr. Ebenezer? Because he has the upper hands and not me. Because we are listening from them. And anything we do, we make them understand what we are doing. And that's why they give us advice. They tell us so many things to do. You, I cannot bypass authority to do anything. Talk, ask the, uh, the, 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 ask father. Ask him about the Secretary General for FACO. Has been, I've been, I, he knows me very well. I've been good to him. Ask him very well. So I'm not like playing some kind of, I'll do my work the way I'm instructed to do it. Yes, because there is nothing I can do now. A part of you discussing with Dr. Ebenezer, and then you people decide up there. I cannot make that decision. That's the truth, sir. So if Sokadev wasn't involved in this incident, why should their commander-in-chief, Ebenezer Kwanga, be contacted to discuss their terms of release? Listen to Reverend Father Jude pleading with Ebenezer Kwanga as instructed by Ajong Divine from Munyenge, dated December 7th, 2018, crying about their torture and pain. Dear Dr. Akwanga, this is Father Jude, and I'm calling you like this after all the efforts to negotiate, to beg, to do everything hiddenly and, and you know, out of integrity so that uh, our driver who took us to Menyonge be released. I would like you to know maybe you are not aware that we spent seven days of torture. This is no small torture because we have all the documented facts with all the pictures and the hospital reports which we have here signed by our bishops and it's actually in the Vatican files. I will not like to threaten you. I am still speaking with you like a brother, asking you to release my driver tomorrow 8th of December before 8 a.m. and let those who are keeping him take him to Moyoka Parish and from that parish, we are going to arrange how he's going to reach us where we are. Dr. Akwanga, your name keeps on coming right from the camp and right from every investigation I've made that you know about the movement of this camp. Do you know that after all the torture we received, all the foodstuffs we bought, almost 500,000, and money worth 500,000 was taken away from our car? Dr. Akwanga, do you know that in two installments, we were asked to pay a ransom of nine million, which we managed and begged on our knees for them to accept in two installments, six million, four millions before, and then two million after. Dr. Akwanga, the promise to take care of our release, of the release of the driver. And for three days, our catechist we sent kept sitting outside till 11 p.m. waiting for that release. Yesterday at 5 p.m., they called him. They called me through him, saying that I must put a sum of 500,000 francs in the mobile account before he release because the boys holding him request that. I refused and I called Opopo's number to ask him if it is coming from him. The commander of that camp answered, and they were even telling me um, I, I, I am ungrateful that we are not here selling granites and using insults on me on my own money. Do you know after everything, they gave me a certain number and I put in 505,000 francs. 5,000 francs for them to, 
to, to remove the, 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 the 500,000 with it. So I've given cash 6.5 million, not counting what worth much money that was taken away from our car. Dr. Akwanga, I have decided so far to sit quiet. But I see that they're torturing us psychologically and taking advantage of the fact that we are priests and that we are not supposed to speak outside of certain things. And now I'm asking vehemently and I'm really insisting that my driver should come out before 8 o'clock on the 8th of December. If not, we are going to all go online. I can also go online. We can have information online. Dr. Akwanga, I have begged, I have begged, I have begged and I can beg no more. I will not give a dime to remove my driver again. I've given a lot of money. I've received insults and I will not do that again. And the world will know that you are masterminding it because you are behind this. You are behind this. Just your word can ask for the release and you don't want to do it. How can I beg again? I am tired and I want the release of my driver immediately. I still have many other information to give. I just sent out this one for now. And please, this is private between you and I. Comply or I go to the media. Thank you. Ebenezer Akwanga, Commander-in-Chief with Residents in Maryland, responds. Father, um, I've been on that issue dealing with that, uh, whether it's Jerry or whosoever. I'm trying to find out some detailed information. And if I get it the way it is, then I will take the action I have to take. So I don't know if anybody is putting you under pressure, they should know that this is not peace time, this is war time. Pressure is not going to solve the problem. I have to get it right in the same manner that I insisted that they should release you. I got it right. I got information. I did my own investigations. Then I decided that, okay, they should let you go. That is how it's going to go. So nobody should put you under pressure because they will not pressure me because I'm first not on the ground. I need to make communications. At times, even to call, it's difficult to get the people. So they should understand that. Thank you. So at this point, viewership should be putting the pieces to the puzzle together. The warlord claims to be investigating Jerry's case, upon which he will make a decision. He says he is not on the ground, which begs the question, why would such a professional guerrilla fighter, guru and leader with a thesis on guerrilla warfare under his belt be leading from Maryland? Since when are guerrilla fighters and warriors afraid of the bush? Now, listen to the accusations levied against Reverend Father Jude and his crew. Doctor, I also heard an information that our cameraman, who is our driver, was taking pictures. We did not take any pictures in Munyenge. No pictures. I alone with my phone took the picture of a big tree I saw on the road. That was all. No other picture was taken. So if they are giving information about that, they should speak well. Yes, we have sophisticated phones, according to the Cameroon standards. iPhone 6, uh, Samsung Galaxy 6 and 7, 8. But that doesn't mean that we're using it to spy anything. So I was hearing the Secretary General of the camp talking about that, that we, we came to spy, we came to take photos, we came to take all this. Is Doctor, it is not true. If there is anything you want to know, any investigation you want to make please i only beg you to listen to me too listen to me dialogue with me let me tell you what happens at my own level i've refused interview with any press till now but i can talk with you anything please you get better facts and compare those facts if you speak with me too and it will be really more objective interestingly the common factor between all kidnappers in this revolution is their quickness to tag all those captured as traitors and spies. Here again is the Supreme Commander and Field Marshal Emeritus of Sokadev stating clearly how he is investigating allegations of spies. So as of now, my goal is simple. I just want to get some clarity and know exactly what to do. That's what I'm trying to do. Uh, I don't listen to all of that. I've heard about the issue of spying, but I need to get to the bottom of it. I need to know who was who there. I've heard that the other father who is from one of the parishes there is 
is from La Republic. I don't know whether it's Betty or where. But I've also heard that because I was thinking there were more Betty people embedded with you people. I have all your IDs. They send them to me. I've not yet opened them to print them out to know who is who. But I'm doing the best I could because my, my job is to make sure I liberate the homeland. It's not to go around kidnapping people or beating people or finding out X or Y. But we'll have to do this with care. My chief of staff, Comrade uh, Divine Ajon. Remember that investigator-in-chief Akwanga had singled out a Betty priest as spy-in-chief. Listen to some glaring facts from Reverend Father Jude about the unfortunate Betty priest. Father Anakle, who, who has been working there for the past one year, is yes from Yaounde. Ever since he was ordained, he has worked in Smallmancon Parish, he has worked in Fulicom Parish in Ashing, that's in Comland, and then he was posted to work there, and was with uh, Brother Abel, who also came with us. Uh, he has always been working there, and the people love him, and Akle is not a spy. I know that our struggle, we are not fighting against persons. We are fighting against situation. The fight will be against government institutions. The fight will be against government, uh, uh, just institutions in all the ramifications, and not against persons. Please, doctor, let us put rationality and the heart in this. Please, please. What stands out here is the idiocy of assuming that all Francophones and Betis are enemies of Anglophones. So the almighty Sokadef is preying on harmless and good intentioned priests and individuals, the same people they claim to be fighting for. Father Jude and his fellow Claretian missionaries have been carrying out goodwill gestures in the area since 2012, as he rightly explains in the following communication. Munyenge belongs to us. It is our parish, Claritian missionaries, and I'm in charge of the pastoral ministry. Uh, since 2012, when we took over that parish, I've been there more than five times. And I've been there with different people. Different people have driven me there. I myself have driven myself there on several grounds. I've been with Jerry there three times. The first time was to go and look at one, uh, the, we visited them and then we helped them to give them a generator for the water project. The second time I went with him was with some people who came and built some toilets and helped them with some, uh, with generator and did prayers there. And the third time Jerry went there was when he went to help the choir to teach the youth choir, uh, something of that sort. I didn't go with him that time. So this was the fourth time I went with him, but personally, I go to Munyenge more than two or three times a year since 2012. It was handed over to us. So um, I don't, I don't really understand where the issue of spy comes from now. Four out of the five had been released, with the driver still in custody. Poor Jerry was released when the ransom was paid in full. This is after no proof was found of them being spies. Our question is, why proceed to take the cash after torturing them if they were not spies? Listen to the cash implications carefully. I say, Kaya Chris, you don't count them fine. I don't count them. How much you receive her, totally? Um, Four million, okay, that's good. I beg, just go, go. Go get a zoom that you're helping with Jerry. I beg, just no, no, no force anything. You know, just get and just be home. No go cause your own problem. We do not ask you anything. We just say one time for if possible for 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 take it, bring it can get and for me. Or can show you road for you. You understand? Yes, because you get to go by me that they wait till six. I don't know if you don't understand me. Oh, people will say more give that four, more give nine million. We will not feel really lose that nine million. We don't suffer and I suffer for find this, uh, the four million. So I want to thank you. I say you, I say really take time to so cancel. Thank you plenty. 
Yeah. yeah. And then that one hundred thousand. So now just to thank you for your transport. You don't spend transport, and they are time. Also, I don't be pay for your time because you risk their life. Yeah, you risk their life. Come. Uh, if from then, if you only pay in a bite self, say make sure you reach your place of PC. I could be very, very grateful. Yeah, you know. So we'll go there for here. The wait. Okay. Okay. Thank you. God bless you. You don't count that money. How much is it? Huh? Two million. Okay. Because uh, that guy they say the four million will give that they're not correct. So they give the other two million. Again, maybe six. The other time, all money will be there inside of the bank, almost 500,000 in the mobile. Yeah. With all the chop will be carried and can't give you now. They take a all, take all chop, take a all, then beat me. We don't have a hospital, so. Yeah. Hospital road already spent more than 300,000. Yeah. You see, you work the cocoa on that food, then beat me. 300,000, that's first, no? Yes. Hospital road already go very far for hospital. Yeah. So. And you know I release that man now, now I know. If you go to the rest of the video, release it. You know I even talk so I say if Because since that day, so I told him I made up again. Uh-huh. You only call me as if you talk to you for me. Yes. I mean, I've been talking to this one. If you be early for me, because uh, I'll be busy as you come and say you don't already come at the side. Where is it? You go that side. They are the eyes that I call you. I have a If you feel that you come in, I don't already come out to go to the inside. Ah, the mother. Yes. Don't be lucky if you keep going and go. Yes. Then, then you say you don't talk to you. Yes. Yeah. 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 God bless you. As is the norm with criminals, they will always try to cover their tracks, no matter how lame is the attempt. The catechists, who have the unfortunate but brave task of taking the cash to the Akwanga commander known as Opopo, was their next target to erase evidence of their crimes. Listen attentively. Dr. Akwanga, today there was an effort to wipe away all this evidence I'm showing. There was an effort because I was asked to treat directly with a catechist who acted like a middleman who would cross over and come and then I'll give him the money to go with it. So the, 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 the result was that he was supposed to have waited and taken the man and he was asked to come at very early in the morning and the man will be given to him this morning. Do you know at 12 midnight he had an attack in his house? Some Amber boys came with their bike to his house. Luckily, they went out to eat himself. And immediately he saw the bikes coming, he hid in the bush. They were in his house till 2 a.m. So from that time, he trekked in the bush and found his way out of that place. Do you know that? What were they coming to do in his house at that time? Was it not an effort to wipe this only evidence we have from him? So I've protected him and he's alive somewhere where I know. And if he should die, if my catechy should die, it becomes more complicated. I will not say this out yet. Even Opopo doesn't know I know this and his camp people. So Akwanga, Dr. Akwanga, sorry for just direct, uh, addressing you directly. Dr. Akwanga, please, 8 a.m. tomorrow, 8th of December, I want my, my, my driver the person who opted to drive me out of that place. I want him out of that punishment and I want him to be placed in Moyoka Parish and I will do the rest from there. Some say PhD stands for permanent head damage. Akwanga is a classic case of this syndrome. Using his title to bully and intimidate any threats the main issue is not the fighters on the ground, but those in the diaspora who have promised them guns, bullets, and everything else. 
these unemployed parasites have continued to keep the funds collected instead of dispatching them to ground zero. Akwanga has no job and has never worked. His dream of becoming a warlord finally materialized. This godless and pompous non-entity has found in the Anglophone struggle an opportunity to throw his featherweight around to solicit funds and act willy-nilly. Anybody who gives this rascal a dime is an accomplice. Akwanga has kept approximately 80% of Sokade funds collected in the diaspora to himself. The rest has been used to buy over fighters and camps he initially claimed to own. So by encouraging the collection of ransom money, he's blinding his audience to his mismanagement. Akwanga has also been using multiple phone numbers in coalition with his surrogates to threaten his enemies and do his dirty work. On that note, it will be worthwhile to expose some key players on Team Akwanga. You have Nelson Banga in Maryland and Divine in Galveston, Texas, whose files are on my desk. The rest know themselves and should be assured that we know them. What a strange coincidence that the same Akwanga who sought and was granted asylum on the grounds of credible fear of persecution and torture should be in any way connected to such abusive, insensitive, and malicious acts. He should and will be investigated for crimes committed under his authority. The U.S. Immigration, the Department of State, and the Department of Justice will be duly notified in the days ahead. A file will also be promptly sent to the International Criminal Court. Akwanga belongs in The Hague and should be cellmates with Paul Bia. We will also be reaching out to the Vatican. The Holy See must take action now. Father Jude and his crew have clearly stated that they have forgiven their captors entirely. However, it is our responsibility to fight for the weak. This episode will be incomplete without mentioning the leader of the camp known by his alias, Opopo. This heartless individual burnt nine captives when his camp was attacked a few days ago. His prison is a local cocoa oven with a height of five feet. So therefore, any captives over five feet tall cannot stand up. It is truly a miracle that Reverend Father Jude and co made it out alive before this happened. We are reliably informed that the said camp is awash with drugs, which explains a lot. Many have been maimed and decapitated in this camp. Anybody who has lost fingers or suffered any inhuman treatment in this camp should immediately reach out to us. The people of Southern Cameroon should rise and make sure that camp is raised to the ground with utmost alacrity because it does not stand for the people in any way. Nobody who does not belong to Sokadev, they think that you can go out there and threaten Opopo. If you threaten any Sokadevian, you have threatened the entire Sokadev and will come after you. I'm sending this particular message to Comrade Ashu Kinsley. The next time you threaten Sokadev again, I will go out of my civility. And you realize that I did not come to this United States because I begged for permission to come to America. I did not. I came here 
through when President George Herbert Bush was president. That was a Republican. They brought me here and they knew what I was standing for, what I was fighting for. I told Homeland Security in Lagos. So you have to be very careful. Nobody threatens Sokadev. Because we follow the Geneva Convention. You don't threaten my forces on the ground. You don't. If you dare again, you will see the other part of us. I'm saying this in the open. Because we have tolerated all of this madness from some of you people. Stay and do your own part of the job and kick yourself away from the idea of threatening people. Let me tell you something. During war time, you don't threaten, you act. If you are serious, you want to do something, act. Don't threaten anybody. Because even now, if we of Sokadev hear that Opopo says, I have headache. Even after this issue, every individual who had sent threats to that camp we bear the brunt of Sukadefians. This I want you to know. It is estimated that this Akwanga run camp has collected over 200 million francs CFA in cash from ransoms. They also seized huge amounts of personal property from unfortunate people worth way more than the cash. Thank you all for your kind attention and stay tuned for episode 24.